Hello. Good morning, everyone. Let me know if I'm audible. Can someone let me know if I'm audible? Sir, audible. OK. Thank you. So let's start with our next topic today, which is job scheduling, which you probably do quite often in our day-to-day -day life without realizing it that there is a algorithm work involved there. And I'll take that one example and then we'll look at how do we go about making a formal algorithm. We start from inefficient algorithm to make it more efficient and then can we really do almost linear time. Last lecture we studied union and find. We make use of that. Next lecture I'm going to do a little change. I'll talk about heap sort because then the topic will discuss um, some kind of heap sort and then there's the reason the half one coding so we'll do heap sort there's the reason I'm not I'm changing the order so that we can better understand so tomorrow we'll discuss heap sort then we we'll go to half one coding and then we we'll go to data sorter path algorithm and so on and so forth so let's look at consider our college case where in our college let's say the first two starting, let's say Ananya, and it starts at 9 a.m. And there are a number of events for a participant to participate. And different events have their own closing time. Participating in any event will assume to be take one hour. So some student can participate in mimicry, somebody can participate in drama or painting or a dance or jam or singing. So assume we have <coughs> about six activities. So, and, but participant requires you to spend full one hour, but these events closes at different point in time. So mimicry would close by 12. So somebody can start join mimicry program at 9 a.m. or maybe 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. But it will close at 12. We assume that they start at six hour in time, not that you join at 10.38 or something of that kind. So considering that, and drama will be closed at 11, Painting comparison will close at 12 and start at 9 o'clock. Now, if when you participate, assuming the person who participates can get an award, an award is given is that's a 200 points or 200 rupees for mimicry, for drama. So, job is to schedule your activity so that you like to get maximum award. Now, given this case that Remember, the drama has to be done by 11 o'clock. So somebody can schedule drama and participate at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Painting, somebody can do at 9, 10, or 11. You have three hours, and so on and so forth. But depending on this, for mimicry, awards the 200 points, and for singing, awards the 60 points. As a participant, your objective is to get the maximum award. So can you work out and tell me what is the maximum award somebody can get and what the schedule would be. Quickly work out paper and pen and tell me what could be the maximum award participant can get and what would the schedule be for that award. Next two minutes work out, let me know the answer. Remember each event is one hour. So mimicry, you can start at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 12 o'clock, whichever way you want. Doesn't really matter. Let me know if anybody work out the schedule and award. That primarily the, the problem we're discussing today, and that typically happens in our college. How do you maximize your benefit?
Any answers? Arvind Patak. Uh, sir, no. So, what should be the max award somebody can get? Niharika, uh, Faria. Give a logic. There are no, no wrong or right answers. We'll come to know. We'll evaluate. I would like to know how do you think about the problem. So one answer I got is singing German mimicry, and that um, so one answer is 385. Can there be better answer? Okay, my answer is 415. Can you work out what is the schedule could be for getting 415 points? Can you work out answer for 415 points? At the first cut, 385 seems good answer. But it's not the optimal answer. Gautam Gunal. Give a thought how can you get four on five points? And I'm giving a real life problem that what you face in day to day life, like our college fest. Anyone, Kavita? So, one answer has been given is. 425, which is jam, drama, and mimicry. So jam is 9 to 10, drama is 10 to 11, and yes, so jam is so given jam is 9 to 10, perfect. And then you have drama, which is 10 to 11, and then mimicry, yeah, so 425. That's a good answer. Better than what I thought. Perfect. We will look at the other way given. So essentially, how do we approach the problem? Would like to answer Vajanti or Aswani. Would like to give how do you approach the problem? Assuming if I were to give you 100 such events, how would you schedule? How would you approach? Any thoughts? You can speak out, anyone? Yeah, go ahead. How would you approach this problem? Okay, that is the crux of pulling the problem. Six you can manually work out, but assuming there are hundred such events, you can't work out manually everything. One answer is closing time. That need not, that could be one approach, but that will not give you more optimal answer. So look, what we need to do, our objective is to find the maximum profit or maximum time. Find the maximum profit or maximum point. So, I think somebody mic is on. Maybe you can put it off. So that echo will not happen from the speaker. Okay. 
Okay, so what we need to do is, I think somebody's speaker is on. Somebody's speaker is on. Can you put it off? Can you put it off? Okay, let me start back. So essentially what we need to do is schedule the jobs in terms of highest award first and in that order, yes. Maximum awards at a time, so keep looking at maximum awards and then look at is it feasible to schedule that event. And based on that, can you find out if that event is schedulable, that's what we do. And that's the approach we'll take and we look at when we sort them as per the maximum awards in non-increasing order or decreasing order and looking at what are the possible events and this is what you call greedy approach it means look at the event with maximum profit and that's what we call it a greedy approach so let's look at how do you want to go about doing that so assume that you are given n jobs to run e job has a deadline like we are given a deadline for us and each event has a profit which is greater than zero because if profit is equal to zero we don't want to schedule because it's not going to give you anything so this is profit greater than zero deadline has to be greater than one because the deadline is zero it doesn't make sense you want to know to schedule that and assuming only one computer like one participant each job takes one unit of time and you earn when your job is completed by deadline so find this subset of jobs like which are the jobs in our case, with the maximum profit. So our objective is to maximize our profit. Subject to that, whatever jobs we choose in this, this should be done within their respective deadline. So this example from the book, given that we have jobs, four jobs, one, two, three, four, and each job has the profit, job one is profit of 100, job two of this, and then their respective deadlines, that were done within two hours, within one hour, within two and the respective deadlines, starting from zero, what would even start. Now, how do you schedule the job? So you can look at the number of feasible solutions. All of them may not be optimal. So one could be I take only one solution, job number one, I'm done, or it could be job number two, or job number three, or job number four, or job number one and two. If I take job number one and two, my profit would be 110. If I take job number one and three, one and three, my profit would be 115. If I take one and four, my profit would be 127. Is one and four feasible? Yes, because I can schedule job number four first and job number one later. So job four get in one hour and job four will get in second hour. So this, this is feasible. But if I have to schedule job one first and then job four, then this will not be workable because job four has to be done by one hour of time frame. And we can look at job two and three. Is job two and four a feasible solution? Is job two and four a feasible solution? If not, why not? I haven't written job 2 and 4, written 3 and 4 and would like to answer why job 2 and 4 is not a feasible solution. Anyone? Both have same deadline. Both have same deadline. Because the moment you job, job 2, the deadline is over, I cannot suit another job. So both being the same deadline, job 
2 and 4 is not a feasible solution and that the reason we not included this and so on so forth so let's look at what is what is my greedy approach to solve the problem so essentially we are looking at look at sum of profits as a measure okay that would be a greedy approach and we choose a job that increases my value that means we start looking at profits from the highest profit to lowest profit and keep looking at job if job is feasible use it otherwise ignore it so we order jobs in decreasing order of profit or i would say better word would be non increasing order of profit non increasing because two jobs could have same profit so decreasing order means you cannot have that non increasing means two jobs could have same profit so order jobs in non increasing order of profit choose one job at a time as per the profit order check for feasibility if it's feasible include the job if it is not discard and look at the next job and that is a overall a primary job will do if you look at this when you schedule them as per the profit <coughs> case on first job job one is so we we order as per the profit so job one is the highest profit job two is next highest profit 27 job three is 15 and job two is 10 so first look at job one job one couldn't be done so feasible solution because my one next job four is one and four feasible solution yes if i schedule job first four and then one then it is feasible but if i schedule job first and then four then it is not a feasible because job four has to be done within first unit of time so if i schedule job one first it will take one unit and no time left for job four so feasible ordering is 4 comma 1 but not 1 comma 4 but yes 1 comma 4 is a feasible solution in a set and then we look at next now that I have two time units uh, both are consumed so any further job because job 3 has to be done time unit 2 if this time unit was 3 then 1 for 3 would have been feasible but since the time unit is 2 this 143 is not a feasible solution so we cannot ignore include job 3 and same way job 2 has to be done time unit of 1 we can't include this so my feasible job remains 1 comma 4 with maximum profit of 127 so this is a generic approach we do for job scheduling and once you build algorithm we look at what is my time complexity and look at what could be happening so at the first approach if we look at if we take n jobs there are n factorial combinations like assuming we are job 1 4 3 and then we have to try all possible combinations and that means but if my job set as side n i have to try factorial n combinations which could be way too costly for me to check it out so essentially job is from a given set let's say i have a job set So from a given job set, how to determine whether it is a given feasible or not? We cannot try all possible permutations because that is factorial and and that will take too much time. So certainly it is feasible but not practical. So essentially what we need to look at is can you find a permutation which meets the requirement? But given a permutation, how much time it takes to check? That's the linear time given a permutation of k jobs i can check is the job i1 should be done in deadline 1 job 2 should be done in deadline 2 and job k should be done in deadline k so as long as for some job all jobs are within their deadline that means if diq is less than equal to q this permutation is feasible but for any job sorry not the, the yeah for diq is that is feasible but if my deadline is the what is called sorry this is i given you wrong let's say my job three and my deadline is two so 
So if job three cannot be done in deadline two, that means my the time which I'm taking, and this is my deadline. So let's say DIQ deadline is two and Q is three. That means job Q would be scheduled at time three, but deadline being two, and that means if Q is greater than DIQ, that job cannot be scheduled and we cannot include it. So that means for all my scheduling order, Q should be less than or equal to my respective deadline. So we can look at the schedule and for each of the job, if the respective time is less than the deadline, then job is feasible. So for any job in this case, the deadline is scheduling order is less than the deadline, then it will work fine. Otherwise, it will not work. And if we need to try all permutations, this very costly affair will not do that. And our objective is to find how to find that permutation which can be checked in linear time, but we cannot check all permutations. And that is what the algorithm we basically look at. To prove our solution, we basically build up given a job, k jobs. Assuming we take any k jobs. And if the order is given as I1, I2, let's say I1 could be job 3, I2 could be job 5, IK could be job 1. So I basically indicate what is the job number. And we say job 3 is the deadline 1, job 5 is deadline 2, and job 1 would be deadline K. So as long as this schedule, respective jobs, follow the order, that means the jobs are feasible. So we look at each job in this order, check with respect to deadlines, this takes linear time. So check for a given order, takes me linear time, and that works fine. So, so given a job, set of K jobs, given their permutation, we can check if it's feasible if, if and only if they can be processed in the order without violating deadline. Second theorem is this greedy method by using in a non-increasing order gives me optimal because we're always looking the maximum profit first. That means any other solution which we will give a lower profit if I take, that will not give me optimal solution. So we'll not go into the details of proof, but this is what in, in, in total we can think the theorems are. So primarily my basic level algorithm at the very, very high level, we get into more details is as follows. Given the set of jobs, I order them as per in the debt profits. So assuming jobs are ordered as per the profit. So the jobs are already ordered as per the highest profits. So if I include first job one, to do it. And for remaining n minus one jobs, I check if current jobs plus the ith job is feasible. How to check feasible is a different case, but assuming the jobs are feasible, that means this job can be done the deadlines, then include I job into the job set, else discard it and continue. So this is my basic overall high level algorithm. We'll get into more details. And so there are two approaches. I'll first run a practical example, how to do it. And then we see how to write a formal algorithm we making that. So this example I'm taking as exercise 3A from the or of a Sani book. If you look at the algorithm, this exercise is given. I take the exercise 3A at the end of this section and I'm working on those. So assuming there are seven jobs given, job J1 to J7, with the respective profit is job one is a profit of three, job two profit of five, and job four profit of 30. And the respective deadlines are one, three, four, three, two, one, two. With this, how would you like to schedule the job? So given this case, we sort them in the order. So this is what my sorted order is. So if you look at first is highest profit, which is job 30. So job 30 comes here. Next highest job is 20. And job 30 is a deadline of two. And this is job seven. So I schedule given jobs, given seven jobs, as per the profit, I schedule them and put them in order. Now I look at how do I go about scheduling the jobs? What do you look at? What do you look at? So now I have maximum, if you look at deadline as four, 
in maximum deadline as four, that means I am not really going to use any of these slots because no jobs can be done in this job. So they would remain empty. So look at how do I proceed. I look at the job one. First job is job J7. This gives my highest profit and I schedule my job into the first slot. Perfectly fine. Now I look at my second job and this gives me a profit of 30. Now look at my second job with a profit of 20 and deadline of 4. So approach is from starting from this slot till the previous one see can the job be shifted, can this be accommodated and this becomes clearer, the next example better. So schedule job 3 and profit of, now let's look at next job J4, profit of 18, deadline is 3, how should I schedule, should I put in here or should I put this job J4 before J3, look job J3 has a deadline of 4 and job J4 has a deadline of 3. So ideally if you can schedule job J4 before J3, we are still not charging any hard so to acquire more jobs. So algorithm is starting from third time slot, look at where this job can be inserted and if I can insert it, I can accommodate more jobs. So essentially is keep looking at can I shift the job to accommodate this job because if I cannot then I have a trouble there. If I prefer to schedule let's say job J4 here, then all three slots are occupied, the shifting would become a lot more tougher, complicated. So what we would like to do is look at when I'm looking at the next job, when I'm looking at job J4 with deadline of 3, can I insert it somewhere in the middle and keep shifting? In this case, you look at job J3 is a deadline of 4. So J3 can be go up to there. But right now, we're looking at only one job. So we shift job J3 by 1. And that essentially what we will do. We shift job J3 by 1. Now, and this J4 is a deadline of 3. So we, and we want to keep the jobs in the order of the deadline. That means job J4 should be scheduled after J7 because J4 is a deadline of 3, J7 is a deadline of 2. So J4 should not be scheduled before J7. So we will not shift J7, we shift only this. And now we schedule job J4 and I get my profit of 80. So far I am fine. Now look at my next job, which is number 4 which is job 6. Job 6 is a deadline of 1. Now certainly I cannot schedule job J6 here but is it possible for me to look at are the jobs J3 was here, previously J3 was here. Can I shift J3 here, J4 there, J4 there and see can I basically job J6 accommodated. And that essentially is what we are doing. So shift J3 from, remember J3 can go up to 4, so we move J3, job J4 deadline of 3, so J4 can move here, so we move J4, job J7 is deadline of 2, so we can shift J7 here, and now my slot is empty, so I can move J6, accommodate this, that would I schedule and my profit is, so this is what I do, so if you look at, I scheduled 4 jobs so far. Now look at job number 5, which is J2, the deadline of 3. Can I accommodate? J3 cannot be shifted anymore. Then J3 cannot be shifted because J3 is the deadline of J3 is the deadline of 4. So J3 cannot do that slot 5. That means none of them can be shifted. That means job J2 cannot be accommodated and will cancel it. Same way, job J1 cannot be accommodated we cancel it and same way job J5 because we cannot accommodate it so all the jobs will get cancelled out. So essentially look at in the algorithm what we are doing is we keep scheduling so the two steps given the current set of jobs given the current set of jobs we look at 
is there a possibility of shifting job to the right can you find a position if first job is find a position can the job be shifted if so so first step is find can the job be shifted second stop is shift the jobs and third stop is the moment you get empty slot put the next job in empty slot so let me repeat this exercise again so it will become clearer so let's start again i sort them as per the profit first is first job is j7 so j7 comes here next job is job number 2 is j3 now we look at j3 as a deadline of 4 that means j3 can be scheduled before j7 remember all our order should be the job has to be scheduled in that not in the order of deadline so that means j3 can be scheduled before j7 so j7 can be shifted so we put j3 in slot number 2 now we we'll look at j4 j4 is the deadline of 3 j3 is the deadline of 4 so j4 should be scheduled at least with, before j3 so can you shift j3 yes because j3 is deadline of 4 but i need only one slot so i shift j3 one slot and then move j4 here this is what we do now we look at next job job number 4 which is j6 z deadline of 1 that means this should come before all these job j7 j3 j4 so we check are is it possible to shift all these three jobs all these three jobs by one that means j3 comes here j4 comes here j7 comes here and then we move j6 to here so first we do a check so first step is check can the job is shifted if yes second step is to move shift the job and third step is schedule the job in the empty slot and that essentially what we are doing so we shift j3 by 1 j4 by next and remember while doing this we are maintaining respective order j7 to j4 so that and we maintaining and then j6 come here now four slots all are occupied none can be shifted anymore so job 5 6 and 7 cannot be scheduled and those got cancelled have you understood this if you look at formal algorithm formal algorithm it basically work the following assuming that we schedule the job in terms of their profit and once you schedule the job we need to check that deadline for each job has to be respectively maintained so we start with initialization we assume there is a job zero which is fictitious job this is used just for boundary condition for that and of zero so that no job will get scheduled before so it's at the boundary condition so it's only for our programming convenience and nothing else and we allow for job insertion so j00 those really only for sentinel or just for boundary conditions so I start my first job as one schedule it and then i know my current job set size is 1 so create my job set size i start looking for 2 to n all the remaining n minus 1 jobs and i check up for the jobs is it possible for job to shift if so so remember we at the let's add a job here so i starting from here is it possible to shift the job this side we what i'm saying if the job of deadline of this is greater than the current deadline the new job and can it be shifted i am not exceeding my deadline so i need to make sure that can i shift the job i am shifting is not more than the new job deadline and i am my deadline should be less than mine if so keep find a position where the i can basically insert a new job so start with the rightmost place again let's say these are the place jobs start from here look at can i find so this job so deadline should be less than the deadline should be greater than the new job and can it be shifted so assume this becomes empty place so this number r becomes 
So keep looking at from right, which is my empty place I can get in. Once you do that, so first step is check, is it possible to ship jobs? Find that R. Now, if it's possible, then shift everything. This is what we are doing. Shift everything. Job Q goes to plus, so Q plus one, and then insert the job into my empty slot. Whatever my insert is, insert the new job empty slot. And this, so first step is check can the job be shifted to the right? If so, find the position. Second job is if you found the position, insert the job into the right place. So first, check is shifted. Second, shift the job. And third is insert the job and increase my job count and keep doing for all this n minus one and this is my algo one how much time it takes you look at in this case we are running this loop outer loop we are running this outer loop n minus two times basically n minus one times we are doing this while loop for each of the iteration. We are doing this job for the size of k. So my job set size is k. That means my optimal job contains k jobs. Then I'll be for each loop. I'm doing this checking k times. And again, I'm shifting is again maximum k. For n jobs, I could be doing k amount of work. So my time complexity is order n into k. Because for each of n, I am doing the k work, and since k could be order of n, so this time taken is order n square. If any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I look at this. What I said, my time complexity is order n k because for each job, I am searching my array maximum k times, and I am shifting in k times n k, and k is order of n, so it could be order n square. Let's look at another example, sorry, another approach. Because remember, shifting is too much of a extra work. Can you do better? So essentially, job is initially in first approach, we were scheduling job in the first available slot. So rather than doing that, schedule the job in the their latest deadline. And then look at for new job, earliest empty slot. So schedule the job as per the latest they can be scheduled. If that slot is full, then look at previous empty slot and schedule it there. And there is no such empty slot, we cannot schedule the job. And so this is a better one. So we are not moving jobs. Once a job is scheduled, it remains there, it doesn't change, and we continue the process. So again, decreasing in this starting job as per their profit order. Now look at these slots. Now look at my first job. First job is J7. Deadline is 2. So we schedule job in the debt slot of 2. And that's what we do. We schedule and we know my profit is 30. Look at my next job. Next job is J3 with a deadline of 4. So we schedule the job into slot 4 and I'll find. My profit becomes 30 plus 20. Now look at my next job, which is J4. And next job is J4, deadline of 3, it starts from 3, start is free, schedule it. And same way I can do J6 and I am fine. Now look at my job J2. If I look at my job J2, deadline is 3, so it starts from 3. 3 is booked, go back, slot 2 is booked, go further down, 1 is booked, 0 cannot schedule, that means J2 cannot be scheduled. Now look at job J1. J1 deadline is 1. Look at the slot 1 is booked and I cannot go back. That means job J1 also cannot be scheduled. And same is for job J5. Slot 2 is booked. Previous slot J1 is also, slot 1 is also booked. So this cannot be scheduled. So this becomes my optimal schedule. And my optimal profit happens to be 30 plus 20 plus 18 plus 6. This is a bad example for this case because we are not doing any searching previously. So let's look at another example. 
which is taken from the book. So for Harovi Sani, this example given as a, before the discussion, the example is given. So let's look at five jobs with the respective profit as 20, 15, 10, and 5 and 1. The already been sorted in the profit and the deadline is 2, 2, 1, 3, 2. So how do we schedule them? Let's look at my job one. The first job is J1 with the deadline of 2. So schedule J1 with in the in the deadline of 2. So my J1 is scheduled. Now look at job J2. Second job, which is 2, 2 is the deadline of 2. Now 2 is the deadline of 2 and 2 is occupied. So look at previous slot. If any other slot is empty, schedule it and we find slot 1 is empty. So J2 is scheduled into the slot 1 and schedule J2. Now look at job J3. <coughs> now job J3 needs a slot 1. When you come to slot 1, slot 1 is this which is already booked. We cannot go further because slot 0 can be scheduled. So that means J3 cannot be scheduled. Now we look at job 4. Job 4 is slot 3. Slot 3 is empty. Schedule it. Now look at job 4. So the job 5. 5 is deadline 2. So we start from 2. 2 is already occupied. Go to previous one. 1 is already occupied. So that means job J5 can be scheduled and we are done. So essentially what we are doing. Given a job, look at the deadline. And if the slot is full, look at previous empty slots. If any slot is empty, schedule it. So in this case, we are not moving any job to the next one. Once a job is scheduled, it works fine. We only we search for empty slot and put your slot there. And if you cannot find any empty slot in the beginning, job can be scheduled. So it become much simpler approach. And my algorithm would basically look like following. So schedule the job. Look at the following. So all this has to be done. Same previous conditions. Initialize set to zero. Then for one to one, basically make the respective slot. All the slots are empty. And then start looking at for my slots. So simply starting from one to one, look at if the slot is available. Starting from the deadline of the given time j, if deadline is any slot is free then keep looking at which can be considered so if the slot is free that means job can be scheduled fill the slot set it to true schedule the job and look at the next one if there is no deadline we we'll look at the next higher job and so on and so forth so first job look at the deadline second job look at the deadline third job look at the deadline so starting from the deadline to zero find out if any slot is free schedule it if no slot is free, job is not scheduled. So much simpler algorithm. So look at even here in this case, my time complexity. Again, look at, I'm looking at N jobs. So I'm looking at N jobs. And for each job, I'm if a total possible jobs are K, I could be searching for K time, empty slot. That means for each of the job, I could be searching K times. So my time complexity is again going to order n k, and if k is order of n, it becomes n square. So no better than previous case, but algorithm is simpler to implement than the previous one, but we still get the same time complexity. Can we do still better? And that is what we look at, as I said, main loop runs n times. And since k is the max deadline, that means loop may run maximum k times, is order n k or k is order of n, order n square. Can we do better? And this is what we'll use, what is called union find algorithm. Remember union find is, we keep merging, doing things up, and essentially looking at, so for each slot, so let's say given a slot, once it is full, can I maintain, which is my next empty slot, like parent, something of that kind, so that, my traversal searching rather than order n, it becomes order n. So that's what we we'll do union find. Once I fill a slot, we somehow maintain for each slot which is the next empty slot. 
update that for each one. That's what we did union find. So we'll make union constant time and find will make it almost linear log star n, and that gives you linear. So let's look at essentially what we are doing. So we will first find maximum time slots, which is minimum of n and maximum of deadline. So let's consider there are four jobs and the deadlines are two, five, three, two. So max deadline would be five, but minimum four comma five is four. I need four slots. Other case, if deadlines are two, three, one, two for four jobs. So max of deadline is three, min of four comma three is three. That means I need three slots. Okay, that's what I need to schedule. And so essentially what you're doing is for each slot we maintain basically what we call is free time slot available for a given slot. So if the slot is full, so initially everything is free. So for each slot, one, two, three, after a good point to same place. But the moment a slot gets full, the after a good point to next free slot. So let's say for slot number four, so this is four, it will point to two, for three it will point to two. If two also gets filled up, then two will point to one, three will point to one, and four will point to one. This is what we did basically path compression in union find algorithm. So let's look at with the example there. Same previous example, five jobs. We had a profits of 20, 15, 10, 5, 1, with deadline as 2, 2, 1, 3, 2. Let's put my M is basically 3. I need three time slots, even the five jobs, because max deadline is 3. That means I need three time slots, and initially they're pointing to themselves. So one FK, basically, this is FK pointing to itself with three time slot. Now I look at the job one. Job one is a profit of 20. Job one is scheduled because now job one is scheduled with the deadline of two. So job one is scheduled here. And now two is occupied. So earlier time is start freeze one. So FK F of two basically becomes one because this has become full. Now look at next job, which is two, profit of 15, deadline is two. Now look, I don't have to search anything free. I know this, F2 says one, so I straight away come to one and schedule my job J, J2 right here. I schedule my job J2 right here, and I make parents of both one and two, point two here. So this lot of one basically becomes FK of one becomes zero. And since we are not looking at two, so we're just changing only there. Now we look at job three with a deadline of one. Deadline of one says point two zero, which cannot be scheduled. So we cannot schedule job J3. Now look at the next job, J4. J4 is a deadline of three with a profit of 10. So we look at three. Three is empty, pointing to itself. So we schedule. Job J4 here. Sorry. Schedule. First we schedule J1. J1 gets in here. J2. J2 gets in at slot 1. And this pointer moves to this one because next video slot for 1 is this. Now we look at job 3. Job 3 is profit of 10, deadline of 1, deadline of 1 already pointing to 0, which can be scheduled. That means job 3 cannot be scheduled. Now we look at job 4. Job 4, that, the profit of 5, deadline of 3, slot 3 is free. So we schedule J4 here. But now next available free slot is neither 2, 2 is booked, 1 is booked. So this should be pointing to empty. And since I'm doing searching since beginning, in the path will also make point two to empty. And this is what we did in union find, which is called path compressor. Those who not attended the class, please look at we did what is called path compressor. Path compression meaning, I will not keep searching every time, 
the moment I know, I'll update my pointer to the very first of the slot, this is called path compression, and this is what we did. So by doing that, three and two both will point to null, and this is what we are doing. And now, now next, if you look at just the five comes, deadline of one, sorry, deadline of two, but if you look at two, two points to zero, which means cannot be scheduled. So that means J5 also cannot be scheduled. And this is what we do. So this essentially is what we did, what is called job scheduling. So what we did, we started greedy approach, meaning order the job in non-increasing order as per profit. And make sure the jobs are scheduled as per the deadlines. That means job JI will be scheduled before job J if di is less than or equal to dj so maintaining that we always look at jobs in terms of price profit ensuring that deadlines are honored and this is what we did using a greedy approach first we look at one approach where the earliest slot and keep shifting to the right which will take a little more work other is put in the right slot and look at the empty slot beginning this is more efficient and, and the general analysis gives me order n square, but by using union find in second approach, it basically gives me n log star n, which is called iterated log. And this log star n, we've seen that log star of 2 raised to power 6, 5, 5, 3, 6 was 5, which is constant. That means for such a large number, the value is 5 which is 5 and which is almost linear. So we'll look at that algorithm using union find, which we discussed earlier, and using second approach, we can almost schedule the jobs in almost <laughs> time, and that's what we did. So with that, I'll stop here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And those of you, you still need to discuss with me separately, ping me, and I can schedule another meeting to explain whatever you don't know. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm done for. And tomorrow we'll look at heap sort. I'd recommend you to read the heap sort material and come prepared so that you can understand it better. Thank you. If no questions, then you can drop out and I'm basically done.